Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have another interesting video here. This time I'm working on a 2007 uh, BMW X3. This has an N52 engine. Uh, the chassis is a E83. Um, I'm actually working on a few different things. The customer's concerns are, you know, misfire, which I already replaced the two coils that were causing that. And we have also a fault, which I'm actually reading the fault codes right now. So just bear with me on that. Um, I have the oscilloscope connected. As you can see, I'm using this time the ATS scope. Uh, nice thing about this scope is you can have the least connected. I'm also only using two channels. So I have the ground connected to the ground terminal in here, which I know the ground connections that are everything is good. Uh, and I'm checking the Baltronic motor. For this engine, this is the Baltronic motor. This is the old style uh, Baltronic motor. I definitely see already something that I don't like is only 4.2 volts with nothing applied, just ignition on. It should be battery voltage, right? Because the motor is not being moved. And I also have an amp clamp in there, which is reading right now zero. And I can go over to the measuring, uh, start a deep record just briefly, right? So we can then put some cursors. We can see that uh, if I move this in here, we got uh, zero amps. I have actually forgot to zero, uh, to zero the amp clamp. So let me actually, tell the scope that it's an amp clamp connected in here because this is in, in voltage so and this is set to 60 amps and then let's zero channel two zero the channel it's not going to change much because again uh, nothing is going in there but right now we have a lot of hash but we can see that uh, in here we're not looking at anything as zero 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 amps um, so the fault codes on the car, uh, let me go there. It's in all systems, there's very slow communication, but so we have DME Baltronic servo motor, a sluggish motor uh, movement or open circuit. So I don't like the way the, uh, it's only reading four volts. So what I'm trying to do is get an active actuation and then see what the amperage is or if you had really a problem with the electronic or no. These that I also want to share is, as you can see, I have my diagnostic car and no hands on the oscilloscope. I attach this uh, ex extended, you know, uh, swing arm. The nice thing about this one is you can, I can swing it anywhere I want. Hopefully you guys can see that. I can bring this up and down. So that's, it has a, a swing arm at the end, which is great. And I also can move it if I want to face it this way, I have I want to be working on this side of the car. I can try to, you know, get away from uh, reflection and then get you a better look of what I'm doing. But yeah, overall, I love this setup that I was able to do. Uh, this helps me to be uh, in my hands free. I don't have to be kneeling down and I can have the oscilloscope in a height that is comfortable for me to work, right? All right, so I want to share that, and this is the uh, beta card. You can see the, uh, let me see right there, is the CX49, and this is the way that I connected. I I have already installed this other swing arm that I have for my monitor, and then I use the same plate. I drill two holes, and I attach the swing telescopic arm in here, so this is very, very nice. I'm very, very happy. I think it came out really nice. I can work in automobiles. I can work in X5, X6, even height. I think the car is in the lift. Yeah, it's in the lift, it's height. And as you can see, I got plenty of room, nothing on my way. All right, going back to what we're here for. So we got that fault. I'm gonna to try to calculate the test plan because BMW did some changes on uh, the way the software is working. I'm not sure if it's just for as technicians uh, on the aftermarket side, or if it's for everybody. It's a bit quick, we'll see, yeah, this has all these memory seats. Yesterday I tried to run this and I, it didn't give me anything for the for the engine. Steering angle, radio, DSC, combust, heating, airbag, transmission fluid, uh, server motor for the headlights. That's not, yeah, so it's just still doing the same thing. So that's something I cannot run any test plans in here. So, but when you are working with ISTA, you can go over to troubleshooting and then you can go over to functional structure. Like, uh, let me just see right here. 
Uh, let me just voltage and current. Let me go over to component structure, see if I find it in there. Usually it's in function structure. I mean, this is an old vehicle, so sometimes it's a little different, so bear with me. Fuel supply, no. No, no, let me see. Both the supply and current. No, that definitely that's not what I'm looking for. So let me go over to component structures. Sensors, electrical transducer, control modules, fuses. Give me one second to find that out so I don't make the video too long. I actually find that easy. So yeah, it is in, um, let me just go up to that. Electrical, it's in component structure, electrical motor and drive units. And then just scroll down and look for the Valtronic as it is here. Right here, Valtronic separate motor. Let me see if this gets me anything. It's not giving me any, anything. Yeah, I cannot do anything with this ISTA. Uh, you see, it's not it's not letting me do any any actuations, which is what I'm looking for. The same problem is I am having no um, test plans, uh, so I'm not sure what BMW has done, but definitely it has become um, usable for each chassis vehicles at least this time. So hopefully they change this and we can reuse it. So I'm going to remove this one and try to use the hotel I'll be right back all right guys I'm using the hotel and I'll tell I can actually run the test plans let me go back and uh, just you know read the polls going to the DME going to intelligent uh, sorry intelligent diagnostics and here what you want to do is you want to select the fault code that you want to actually create a, a test plan for this is almost the same thing as in BMW regional and then DTC analysis um, let me see if I actually get something uh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, look like we have absolutely no actuation. Uh, this is really not good. Yeah, this is just, I did to see a description, nothing in here to do. So, because I was actually trying to go into active tests and see if I have anything for the Valtronic but we're not seeing anything so i guess we're going to have to run the vehicle and then see what we see right so let me start a cart i might need somebody uh, let me get somebody first here i got natalie in the vehicle she's going to be helping me so let's get some um data okay so we got eccentric shaft angle and specified angle so it's, it's in zero i'm going to start the do recording all right start the vehicle we can see some actuations in there happening. It's almost matching in there, so I want to stop this one and I want to save this. So I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I stopped the capture to say and save the, the data. We saw that, you know, angle wise was kind of like okay. I would like to see what the amperage is in here. So, oof, definitely very high. We are definitely getting the spikes of like uh what is it 56 let me see the other one down uh, roughly you know 55 and 56 that's very high consumption for this one i have seen these ones working you know when they're normal working around 35 to 40 45 amperage of the most especially when it's moving because it's obviously uh, more work in there so let's let's get us some window here and see what we see well, we can see yeah, up and downs, and this is the way the motor is working. Um, we can turn one channel. Let's look at the amperage out of the, uh, of the way one second, because I want to know what we see here. So, yeah, the computer is pulsing this. Let me get the cursors. Funny, it goes into negative voltage because right now this one is in uh, minus 600 milli uh, millivolts, right? Uh, when it starts uh, working, we're around, you know, uh, 746, and it goes up to 11.89, 80, which is okay. Um, 
as soon as the first movement happens, we can see that the actual computer is, is because it's, this is the in rush current and voltage to make the motor move. And then after that is just a pulse width. Uh, we can see it's like, you know, around nine and a half volts, right? And then minus 600, like almost 700 millivolts in there. So if we bring the amperage back, I'm going to have to zoom out of the window. So let me zoom out the full. So yeah, it's a little hard to say because, or hard to see, not to say, uh, when that is happening. But we can see the computer is in control, is moving it, amperages. After the first one, we only have a couple of a couple of times when it went really high. This is what I'm looking for to see completely, you know, in a normal operation. You know, this is around there. You see what I mean? 33 amps. So, but these other ones being that high that can only be caused by two things we have a motor that is drawing too much amperage or we have an internal problem on the mechanism of the of the electronic right so i will definitely start because this is a 2007 uh, i will definitely start with a brand new motor and retest that's what i will recommend the customer to do again if we turn this channel off we can see the voltage wise this is st staying across the board kind of like in the same way uh, also, I changed the settings because I was putting the amperage on channel 2 and I actually have that backwards. So, but yeah, we can see actuations. When actuations are happening, it's when we have the highest spikes, but not all the time. This is pretty much maybe a stop and a step because remember, it's going back and forth. So, I'm going to get another one with the engine running. Uh, so, go ahead and start it. So yeah, we can see that amperage spikes but right there. Doing acceleration. Higher. No. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You see this artist spikes I don't like. They're reaching over 60 amps. My amp lamp is 60 amps. So they're definitely going up, up the limit. And we don't want that because that's why it's overload protection. Because if we go over the folds right here on the... Um, on the hotel, we will have a different a different description. Uh, Baltronic thermal overload protection warning threshold. So these are when we see those high spikes. Again, if we would be able just to see the normal ones, let me stop this. Oh, by the way, I'm I'm using the Surface Pro 9 on this. This is the new stylus, and I can just uh, click, and that will do exactly what I just did. Thank you, Jeff and ATS for helping me with that. But you see, this is this is normal, 37 and a half. That's what we're looking for, not those high spikes. So I'm going to keep going. Do I notice not throttle? And we will see only when that is movement. I don't like a little bit of a noise. Do it again. I can hear a little bit of it, a little bit of a and that is on the Voltronic. Do it again. We just did an oil service on this car and that will probably help this vehicle because that's what I let the cursors in there. We can see that, you know, when it's moving, not on that in rush acceleration, we don't get those high spikes. Do it again. But in the acceleration, when it has to move really quickly is when we are getting those spikes. And this is a sluggish movement right there. So again, you can just click in here one time. Come on, don't fail me. <laughs> It didn't work. Well, sometimes, um, let me just revisit that. So let me get the pen hand before we go into something else. Uh, that's, I cut the capture in there. Hmm. All right, start again. I'm in acceleration. See, those are the movements I don't like. So let me stop it. All right, so it did work a little on the second try. So we're going to do this in some window. Want to see what is, you see what is happening in here? This is not normal. This is a sluggish. The amperage is going negative and not much positive. Remember, this is a electronic motor. So this will change depends on the, the way the engine really wants to move. The electronic, let's say if it's moving it this way, now it wants to close, it will change the amperage. So not abnormal, but the way it's, it's doing it is what I consider not normal. And we can see, uh, let me do a window again, some window. Yes, we are there. 
I'm trying to analyze the data with you guys in here. I don't like the spikes on the bottom, but a little hard to say with, again, always try to capture as much data you can from something you're doing an analysis. Don't just jump the gun right away with just one capture. So let's do this again. We can see that when it's not being activated, the computer still sends a signal to keep the idle in control, right? So that's what we're seeing in here. This is just to keep the idle in control, idle in control. So that is completely normal. I like that. I just like, you know, glitches. Again, uh, it will change position based on direction, right? Do another snap throttle. Look like it's getting better because again, we just did an oil service on this car. So it was very long time due. So we might be seeing right now a better movement of the motor or the gears inside because of the service, but I don't like that high amperage. Doing it again. You see right there, it's over 60 amps. Uh, I don't like that. So I'm definitely going to call the motor. I will record another video when we do that uh, test. Uh, let me stop this so I can save this data and I uh, will have that for, for that. But yeah, so guys, this is just a way that I always like to try to test and show the you know the value on the testing call to the customers this is not just a reading of a poll you can turn the engine off this is not just the reading of a poll this is actually hands-on work doing a test because uh you know do we need the motor or not so we need to make sure that we give the right direction the right recommendation to our customers and that's what we always try to steer and make the customer aware that these are the diagnostic that's not just a reading of the false. All right, guys, uh, I hope I get the okay to replace that. If I do, I will be recording a second part with a new uh, Biotronic motor installed on the car. Thank you so much for visiting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.